Okay, the Dr. Steelhammer, uh, Latimer Kalisco. Let's uh, talk about the heavyweight division. Let's talk about, uh, hypothetically speaking, if we could replace Kalisco with another white heavyweight contender from the past, who would we pick? Now, I'm talking about somebody that can bring excitement. You know, uh, Kalisco is a very big physical man, um, gifted. You know, uh, but sometimes can be mechanical, and sometimes can be a bore when you watch him, right? I think that's most of every fight fan's complaint is that he uh, tends to bore you, where it shies you away from watching him, and it kind of leaves a bitter taste in your mouth after you're done watching him, and you sat through all 12 of his hand slapping and uh, hug you, hey, I haven't seen you for a while type of style. So let's talk about some heavyweights from the past that would, you think, and I would think, that would generate the hype that a heavyweight can do right now. Since the heavyweight division is so shallow right now with no real black heavyweights that are coming up, except for David Hay, right? Or uh, a Mexicano, the Nightmare. Let's talk about that. I'm going to give you my four fighters that I think that if they're in this particular era, they would have a better chance of being big superstars and reigning for quite some time since the heavyweight division is very thin. My first guy that I'm going to bring out is uh, Joe Macy. Before everybody goes, what, Jane, Joe Macy? Listen, <clears throat> look at the heavyweight we got right now, all the heavyweights. Not very deep. Joe Macy, though, was a guy that was able to pack in seats. And he had an exciting style. He was a puncher. He wasn't the most skillful boxer, but he was a puncher. He was a guy that really did look for giving you exciting fights and knocking out his opponent and then move on, right? Before the whole brain scan type of deal came about, and before him making, trying to make a comeback and not looking the same, where he saw the boxing spirit left his soul, and now he's talking about being a politician, Macy was a little special. Macy was a little intriguing. Macy was somebody you would really want to sit down and watch if you love her or hate him, okay? Second guy that I like to talk about is Gary Cooney. Gary Cooney, I mean, Larry Holmes and Gary Cooney generated big numbers when they decided to face each other. They actually, the Gary Cooney fight is the one that had started up the whole phrase, the great wide hope. And uh, we know the outcome of that. Now, Gary Cooney, you imagine if there was no Larry Holmes for him to face. Particularly now, there are no Larry Holmes right now in this weight era. There's no great jabs. There is no uh, uh, really good technically sound Larry Holmes for Gary Cooney not to pass through. He would do great. He would be a, a, a favor against Kalisco. He'd be a favor against a Samuel Peter. He would be a favor against a uh, James Tony. He'd be a favor against a Rockman. You know, he's got great power, very tall, big. He's a big Irishman, you know. Uh, um, he had uh, the charisma as a heavyweight, you know, a heavyweight. Very, uh, he, you know, he was a very likable person. And really, he would bring a lot more excitement than Mr. Steelhammer. Second guy, that's what my pick was. Now, the third guy that I really like is uh, Tommy the Duke Morrison. Morrison was a short stature but bulky heavyweight. And let's not forget, Morrison had good boxing skills too when he used them. Problem with Morrison was at times he would get caught up in the moment and he just tended to trade and would get him in trouble. Okay, now you would hear like, oh, he's got a glass jaw, but let's really recap of the guys that knocked him out. First guy, Mer uh, Ray Mercer. Mercer was a good puncher. Mercer had a good left hook and a good right. You know, uh, Morrison was giving Mercer problems before the fight ended in five, I believe it was five rounds. But, you imagine at this particular time, you would have to pick against, you would have to pick Morrison against Kalisco or anybody else. Just because of the fact that Morrison would either outbox you, like he did at Foreman, 
who was a much older fighter, so don't even email about, about that. But he was able to show he can adjust to a fight. And that's what you need out of a fighter, out of a boxer. How, can they adjust? Do they know their third power stat is not as equal as this person, so they need to revert to something different? That's an intelligent fighter. Morrison was a very intelligent fighter. You know, he would either box you or he tried to knock you out. And sometimes he was successful, sometimes he wasn't successful. That's the way the game goes. That is the what that's what particular fighters give to fans and viewers that are watching boxing. That tune in to watch a good fight. Morrison was one of those type of guys that aimed to please. Imagine if he was in this time. How many seats, how many arenas would he fill up? And would there really be any UFC fans? Probably not. Not with, not with the Duke. Because Duke was always willing to duke it out with whoever was in front of him. Now, fourth and final guy is a guy that still in, is in the heavyweight division, but uh, wouldn't really be considered as a major, major threat to anybody that's elite. And he's had his moments, uh, but he's ruining them on his own. And let's talk, well, I'm going to give you the name. It's the, uh, the foul pole, Andrew Galata. You imagine the Andrew Galata that faced Big Daddy Bo, Bo being a very top, top dog in the heavyweight division, and uh, at, at the time was probably one of the most feared heavyweights in the late 90s. And he was uh, beating them on both occasions, the first match and the rematch, and what, but tell he reverted into dirty tactics. Under pressure, the guy was just didn't know how to handle it, uh, or didn't know how to handle success at certain points. So he would fall back into being this thuggish type of fighter and low blow you and use his head and even he even bit a guy on the shoulder. I don't know, he's hungry. But that's the way Galata was. Could you imagine if Galata was at this era right now when he was in 90, what, 96, 97? You really think a Kalisco would be able to stand to a Andrew Galata, who was able to fight inside, who's got great punching power, who has a who had a phenomenal left jab, and did I already mention was a great inside fighter and a body shot. This guy threw tremendous and beautiful body shots when they were above the waist. Those were my picks. You tell me who you think, and like I said, um, if you're watching this show, subscribe. If you don't like my show, that's cool too. You know what I'm saying? There are plenty other boxing shows that are great. You got Blood Boxing, you got Midnight Boxing, you got uh, uh, The Body Banger, homeboy, you know? Um, and there's a, there's, a, there's, a young, there's a young kid right now called, uh, uh, I believe it's Boxing Predictions, uh, the Kelly Palvik, he's, he's a subscriber to my show. Show him some love, you know? He's a young, young cat trying to get into the game right now. Um, give him some feedback. Help them out, you know, because, you know, there's a big saying that all the young fans are going to MMA, and that's not true, and he's living proof. He's a boxing fan, and as a boxing family, we need to support everybody that's in the game. Anyways, I'm your host, Dave Duenas, and uh, thanks for watching. There will be blood.